Bandwidth for first updates now is supported by Animark. Are you competition ready? Go to Animark.com and keep your team inspired. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. First Updates Now is brought to you by viewers like you. Fund relies on the generous support of our fans in order to continue to keep creating content. Please consider donating, giving bits, or subscribing. Subscribe for a few bucks a month or for free through Twitch Prime. And don't forget that our subscribers get 5x chance to win on all giveaways. All right, 159 teams in action, 12 event winners, four more teams punching their tickets to MSC with chairman's wins, and two teams earning that coveted cling bling in our week two recaps. All this, the top 10 teams in FIM voted on by you, and some previews for our five, count them five, Michigan districts coming up in week three. All coming up tonight on Infimidation. Reporting for first updates now, I'm PJ. I'm Nick. And I'm Allison. All right, Nick, we had our first West Side event this week at the St. Joe District, not to be confused with the Indiana District of the same name. Why it's the same weekend every year, I cannot tell you. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tell me what happened out there? All right, so we had 40 teams compete this weekend at St. Joe. Uh, well, we were watching at least when the stream was working, but uh, no one was surprised to see uh, 2767 Strike Force from Kalamazoo and qualifications in the number one spot. Uh, the reigning world championship, uh, world champion, uh, they selected 3452, the Green Engineers from Berrien Springs, uh, as well as 6615, Bell Voxel Bots from Belleville. Uh, their elimination pass saw them run into teams such as 2337, the Engine Nerds, uh, but pushed on to the finals, where they faced the number two alliance of Captain 2474, Excel from Niles, uh, the home team, 3620, the Average Joes from St. Joseph, and 5927, Academy Globetrotters from Zealand. Uh, Strikeforce showed why they're the reigning world champs uh, with the number one alliance winning both finals matches pretty handily on their way to a district win. Uh, 2337 Engineers, uh, they were able to win the district chairman's award. Uh, 288 Robo Dogs won uh, Engineering Inspiration. And 7210 Robo Jackets, uh, not to be confused with 3538 Robo Jackets, uh, but they were able to win the rookie all star award. Uh, and that wraps up uh, St. Joseph. How was Centerline this weekend, PJ? All right, so Centerline, I've mentioned before, Centerline's my favorite event every year. Um, I'm just really proud of how far my little baby Centerline has uh, come. It used to be called the Detroit District, and many people, including myself, used to refer to it as Derp Detroit um, because it was generally the weakest event in FIM every year. Uh, but this year definitely changed when in match number one, qualification match one, we had a uh, triple climb involving teams 1025, 1189, and 453. Uh, so that really set the tone for the rest of the event. Uh, 3098 ended up ranking first, but that wasn't a guarantee until about match 73 or 74. There was a lot of going back and forth in the rankings between 1025, 1189, and 3098. Uh, and they said 3098 ended with that top spot. Uh, they picked up 1025 uh, impies. And then 1189, the Gearheads ended up the second-seeded captain, and they picked 123 uh, from Team Cosmos from Hamtramck. Uh, rounding out those two alliances was 5197 DCP at Northwestern for the number one alliance, and 2224 Robo Phoenix from Detroit on the second-seeded alliance. Those first numbers, numbers one and two, if I could talk today, uh, would go on to face each other in the finals. Uh, and with the number one alliance coming out on top. When it came time for awards, uh, 3175, the Night Vision out of Gross Point Woods, were able to secure the Engineering Inspiration Award. And 1189 was able to grab that sweet, sweet cling bling uh, by winning Chairman's Award along with their silver finalist medals. Uh, so that was Centerline. It was a great time, great event, loved it. Uh, Going to be back next year. So, Nick, what happened at Waterford? 
All right, moving on to Waterford. Uh, featured our biggest upset of the week in Michigan. Uh, number one alliance went up against the number six alliance in the finals. Uh, 56-74, the Gearhounds seated first. Uh, they selected 51-55, the Bearcats, and 52-29, Heritage Hawkbots. Uh, on the other side of the field, number six alliance was captained by 5907, uh, CC Shambots from Novi, and they selected 3770, Blitzkrieg from Midland, and 6117, Wingspan from Pontiac. Uh, while the number one alliance was able to come out of auto with a two-cube advantage on the scale, uh, which was a pretty big deal, uh, the number six alliance was still able to push back, uh, get the advantage back on the scale. And uh, at times they had all three robots actually scoring on the scale, uh, which is a lot of coordination, uh, But it was, and that was enough to get the win. Uh, 2137 Torque from Oxford uh, was the district chairman's award winner. And then 3770 got that sweet, sweet cling bling, uh, went in the engineering inspiration award to go along with the victory. Uh, 6877 was also Mechanical Mustangs from Grand Rapids, took home the Rookie All-Star Award. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to 6117 Wingspan. Uh, they forgot their first ever blue banner, uh, and I know uh, 33 actually helped them uh, start back in 2016. And we have uh, alumni that are helping mentor them now, and I know all of our kids, uh, we actually went to Kettering for the weekend to watch Eliminations, and they were all checking their phones, and they were super excited to see uh, Wingspan get that win. So shout out to them. And uh, so speaking of Kettering, we're going to move on to Kettering 2. Uh, Allison, you were there all weekend. How was Kettering 2? Yeah, Kettering 2 was a really interesting event. I was super excited to be there all weekend. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to a couple interesting robots that I really enjoyed getting to look at. So 314, Big Mo, or the Megatron Oracles, had a really sick like quick moving switch slash feeder robot strategy. They got out in the semifinals, but they we're a really interesting robot, and I'm excited to see what they can do for the rest of the season. And then we also had 3707, which was the Techno Dogs, and they had a really nice swerve. We were all called Dirty swerve. The dirty, dirty swerve. swerve all weekend, and it was a lot of fun. And they had such an amazing spirit. Um, they were just a great team to get to watch. So let's get into who won the event. So in the finals, it was uh, the first alliance versus the second alliance, pretty predictable, but it was a very interesting match. We had 4003, the Trisonics. They were the first ranked seeded team, and they ended up picking 494, the Martians, and 7144, Next Check Hydra, which is a rookie team this year. And they were up against the second ranked alliance, 3707, the Techno Dogs with the Dirty Swerve. Uh, 217 was their first pick, the Thunder Chickens, and 6193, Legend of Robotics. The, the finals went into three matches. The first one was taken by the first alliance. Final score, 343 to 273. It was really close, back and forth between the scale. Um, but the first alliance took it. And the second match was went to the second-ranked alliance with a final score of 326 to 477. So they actually, the rookie robot Hydra kind of got knocked out in the null zone, and the Thunder Chickens just racked up those tech fouls on them making like i don't know it was like 50 tech points or tech foul points or something like that so they got the win in that match and then it went to the third match and it was super close back and forth between the the scale but i think because of the scale odd time that the first alliance got they won the match 432 to 306 it was pretty interesting but the one thing that i was surprised about between all three of these competitions um final matches was the double climb strategy that these teams were actually having a lot of success at. I always thought that the double climbs would be with like another robot carrying another, but these robots were able to both latch onto the rung and climb up at the same time. So it was super cool to be able to watch that. I think both alliances had success with that in those three matches and all the elimination matches. So looking at awards, we had 2619, the charge take home the engineering inspiration. And 3667, the Mechanum Knights, first time ever winner, uh, chairman's award at the event. They will always be the Poho Robos in my heart. That was their <laughs> old name. They were the Poho Robos for forever, and I'm still salty they changed their name. I didn't even know that. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just say real quick, like, if everyone's looking for really entertaining matches out of Michigan, I think Kettering was probably... Uh, the closest eliminations that Michigan has seen so far, like all of the elimination matches for the most part were pretty competitive. Um, maybe not the quarterfinals so much, but definitely the semifinals were competitive. And then the finals, it really was like back and forth the entire time. Um, a lot of good robots in those finals. So uh, if you haven't watched the Kettering finals already, I would go check that out. 
Uh, PJ, were you, do you have any teams that kind of traveled abroad outside of Michigan that you want to give a quick shout out to? Uh, yeah, we had six or seven teams travel down to the Indiana State Joe event this week. Uh, the two I want to shout out were uh, 3357, the Comets, uh, and 74, Team Chaos. They actually ended up winning the event uh, with 1024 kilobytes out of Indiana. So uh, 3357 was just absolutely dominant down in Indiana all weekend. So uh, good job on bringing that gold back to Michigan, guys. All right. So as some of you might have already heard on some of the other previous shows tonight, uh, starting this week, we are going to announce what the top 10 teams in our region was uh, based off of the FRC top 25 poll voting that you, the community, votes on every week. Um, so we're not going to be announcing where they are where they are in the top 25 overall, but we're going to be announcing who the top 10 vote getters were out of all Michigan teams. Um, so we're going to start on off with number 10. Allison, who was our number 10 team of the week? Yeah, our number 10 team for week two was team 68, Trucktown Thunder. All right. Number nine was 56-74, the Gear Hounds. And then coming in at eight was 24-74, XL. Number seven, we got 494, the Martians. Uh, number six, we had 36-20, the Average Joes. And number five, the legendary 217, the Thunder Chickens. Number four, we got 3452, the Green Engineers. Uh, number three, we had 4003, the Trisonics. And then number two, all the dramas in the two spot, as Justin likes to say, is 3357, <laughs> the Comets. And then mm -hmm. coming in at number one, we had 2767, Strike Force. So, yeah. <laughs> Surprising absolutely no one. But, uh... It was really interesting uh, when I was looking at these top 10. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty strong west side bias, uh, west, west side meaning the west side of Michigan. Uh, like six of, I don't know, some people don't know what I'm talking about. Nick, don't laugh at me. Uh, so, uh, so six of those top 10 teams come from west side events, most of them competing actually at St. Joe. Uh, 4,003 competed at Kettering, but, you know, they're from the west side. 3,357 down in Indiana is a west side team. So I just thought it was really interesting because normally the West Side does not get a lot of recognition. So it was kind of – I did not expect them to have this strong showing in our first sort of time. Yeah, and I, and I think part of that might – maybe that's because some of those teams went down to Indiana. Um, so you had people outside Michigan also watching, and then you would also have Michigan people voting for them as well. So, you know, like I said, it is from the top 25 uh, overall poll voting that we're pulling this from. So you do have people outside Michigan voting on this. Uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to 3707, who was at Kettering this weekend. I thought they looked awesome. Um, I'm always a big Swerve fan, as I'm sure some people out there know. Uh, so they had a pretty good-looking one from what I could tell. They were very smooth across the field the whole time. So quick shout-out to them. And then I'm going to shout-out to 1025 Impies. Uh, I think they may have the best climb assist in Michigan right now uh, with they with their triple climbing ability because they – Teams can it's teams can either come at it from the side or the front, whichever one is better for that team. So you're not locked in, which makes it much easier for them to assist with these other teams. Uh, so I think that they're going to be do a great job at Gold Lake this week. But we'll get there in a second when we get into our previews. Yeah, yeah. they definitely seem like the most uh, the most consistent, maybe after hot so far this season. So, all right, uh, let's take a look at our next week previews. So starting with Gaylord, uh, we're heading up north. We got a couple teams to look out for up there. We have Team 226, the Hammerheads. Uh, we've seen them before at an event already. They have the switch slash vault strategy. We have Team 862, Lightning Robotics. They played at Gibraltar Week 1, and they lost to the finals. They got a pretty good scale Auton. Let's see if they can improve it for the next competition. We have Team 1711, the Raptors. They were in the finals at Traverse City. They're also a pretty good-looking scale bot. We also have Team 3767, Titans. Um, we have Team 4237, which is Team Lancelot. They lost in the semis at St. Joe, but they were versing against Strike Force, and they look to be a pretty talented scale bot, so I'm interested to see what they can bring to Gaylord. And a couple other teams to look at, we have Team 5114, the Titanium Tigers. They lost at the Kettering 1 Finals, uh, but they have a pretty semi-successful double climb slash scale, and hopefully they've had time to improve it a little bit more before this next competition. 
Um, yeah. Chairman's favorites for the competition, we have Team 3618, the Petoskey Paladins. They have won four chairman's competitions, uh, three district and one state competition. But there are a couple other teams to look out for, for taking that blue banner from them. We have Team 226, the Hammerheads, 862, 1711, and 3667. Also, 5114, who won their first chairman's banner um, last year. I'll also be at the event this weekend, so feel free to stop by and say hi if you see me. What's happening at Gold Lake, PJ? Uh, the favorites at Gold Lake going in have to be, uh, there's actually a couple that I would put right in this top tier. 1025, my boys from Centerline. Uh, Impies, I think, have poised to do well, uh, along with 4967, that one team out of Belmont. They have not competed yet this year, so we'll see what their robot looks like. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. I think both of those teams have some legit shots at uh, some some cling bling this week uh, because they're both very strong chairmans and EI teams and strong robots. Uh, additionally, 3538 uh, has got to be one of the favorite robot-wise coming in. They were just dominant at the Southfield event, winning, and we'll be looking for that second blue banner this year. Uh, 5843 Flurb is looking to continue the success they found at Southfield as well. Uh, 5462, Tupaw Robotics, and 5675, Wirecast, are looking to continue their breakout performances from last year. Uh, three rookies are going to be making their premieres at the event. Um, I'm going to be there refereeing again. Uh, if you see me, come say hi. And we'll have a good time at Gold Lake. <laughs> Heading up, uh, I guess, even farther up north. To <laughs> yeah, it looks like I got all the up north events this week. But uh, looks like there's a couple teams heading up north as well. We have 245, the Adam Bots, who were the Kettering Week 1 winners. We have 894, the Power Chargers, and also Team 1322, the Genesee Youth Area Team. Um, those are pretty much the only three southern teams heading up there, but we have a couple northern favorite teams that everyone seems to love, and they get a couple blue banners up north every year. But we got teams 904, D Cube, 3602, the Robomos, and Team 4391, the Brave Bots. We also have Team 5505, which I noticed the their V2 Robotics, they uh, have won the Lakes of Superior State University blue banner in 2016 and then last year they got the both the traverse city and gaylord banner and i noticed that this year they're going to escanaba and alpina so it looks like they're looking to grab the blue banners for all the up north events which is pretty cool i don't um, think i don't think 5505 has in team history finished below finalist yeah they're a very impressive wow. team um just not many people know about them but i'm excited to see what they'll bring to escanaba this year um Okay, there was an interesting uh, un reveal video that we found. A57 in Superior RoboWorks had a dual ramp, which could lead to pretty high ranking at the event, so I'm excited to see if they can get that working. And then we also have Team 6637, the Beta Wolves, who were rookie all-star last year, and there are five other new, brand-new rookie teams who are going to be at the event. Chairman's winners, it's looking like we have a little bit of competition between 1322, the Genesee Robotic Area Youth Team. They just won EI at Kettering Week 1, and they have a lot of previous chairman's experience. But then up north favorites, we have Team 3602, the Robomos, the host team for the event. Um, everyone up north really loves the Robomos, so I'm excited to see what they can bring for chairman's as well. What's happening at Lincoln this week? <laughs> All right, so at Lincoln, uh, there's three teams looking to build on their success uh, from the Gibraltar event, which is 1023 Bedford Express, 6852, um, who I've been calling Baby Bedford, and 3604, <laughs> the Goon Squad. All of them did very well at Gibraltar with 1023 winning the event, and they're all looking to continue that success. Uh, 3641 is looking to bring their success from the Palmetto District, uh, not District, Palmetto Regional, uh, to, to Michigan. Uh, we've got 5530, who were the uh, the lawnmowers. They were double finalists last year, and they're sort of looking to break that ceiling and become and get uh, an event win. Uh, other teams of note, 2832 and 5050 have both had a lot of success over the years. And then Team 910, uh, the Foley Freeze, will be making their premiere. They had three event wins last year, and one. And then they were finalists on their division at MSC. However, they lost their entire drive team. 
Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see and that the drivers were what made those event wins because the robot was not super impressive last year, but it was just driven very well. Um, so they lost that entire drive team. So it's going to be very interesting to see if they're going to be able to recover. Uh, now we're going to Mick. Uh, Nick. Uh, <laughs> Hello. It's, it's, it's been a rough day, guys. OK, so Nick uh, saved probably the best district for last. What's going to happen at Milford? All right, it is Milford. Uh, so 25 of the 40 teams competing at Milford this weekend have played once already. Um, so it's definitely going to be an ex more experienced event, but by no means is it all experienced teams. Um, but I definitely expect the game to be raised um, compared to what a lot of these teams saw in week one that have competed already. Uh, I think going in 33 is definitely one of the heavy favorites. Um, you know, I'm on the team, so we're hoping to you know come back and, and win another a second event for the season. Uh, but the home team, 67 hot. Uh, is definitely going to be looking to uh, get the win after finishing as finalist at Southfield. They've got a really good uh, dual climber, maybe the, probably the best in the state, at least as far as reliability goes right now. Um, in addition, uh, 27 Rush uh, played up in New York in week one. Uh, they're looking to improve on that. Uh, 51 Wings of Fire had a, had a pretty good showing at their uh, week one event. Uh, 548, 2960 are both going to be playing there as well. I expect uh, pretty good things for both of those teams as well. Uh, as far as chairman's goes, uh, 33 already won at Southfield, so they are out of the running for chairman's here. Uh, I think definitely the big two favorites going into this weekend have to be either 548 or 503. Uh, I think just about everybody would be surprised if one of those two teams do not come out the winner. Uh, so the question, I think, is going to be who beats the other. So yeah, that definitely. wraps everything up for our previews. Uh, we're going to move on to a quick, quick discussion topic. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, but real quick, we just wanted to kind of point out, it seems like so far, at least especially in Michigan, uh, a lot of these matches are kind of getting decided either in autonomous mode or in the first 15, 30 seconds of who who controls that scale at the beginning of the match. It seems like whoever controls the scale, regardless of hangs at the end, uh, generally win. I think I'm not even sure we've had a dual hanging team Alliance even win elimination so far in Michigan. So, uh, you know, what do you guys think about that? Is that going to continue to happen throughout the season? Are we going to see that evolve a little bit? Uh, what do you think? What do you guys think? Well, um, I have at Kettering, both of the alliances were dual hanging, but both of them climbed themselves. So it wasn't right. like the carrying, but it did happen. But yeah, Auton and just capturing the scale first seems to be very important. Uh, as you saw, like at most districts and regionals, the team that could grab the scale by like two plus cubes before the other team seems to win it most of the time. And it's hard to come back from that, especially because the scale's leaning towards your favor. So all the cubes are where you need them and where it's going to be controlling them the best, I would say. So pretty much I'm like Auton, scale Autons and the more cubes you can get on there, faster seems to be like very important in the upcoming weeks. What do you think, PJ? Yeah, I agree. And I think it was Nick said earlier before we got on the call was once if you start, if you're the first one in control, right, you're earning points. And then if the other team, if the other alliances manages to balance the scale, yeah. the, best, the best they're doing is stopping you from scoring. Whereas... So if you can keep if you're going one cube for one cube, you're getting points half the time and the other half of the time they're just neutralizing you. You can't they're not scoring for themselves. So it's like whoever controls the scale first controls the match. Right. I think I think the one thing I will say is I think the more teams try to make sure they're paying attention to the opponent switch, uh, maybe once the portal starts getting used a little bit more, I think we saw it more at other events like Arizona North. I know the Cheesy Poos were nailing the switch with their portal, their opponent switch. So I think if that starts to happen more, it might allow the opponent to kind of swing back the scale in their favor maybe. So anyway, that's our discussion. Uh, PJ. All right. So I guess I'll take us out. Uh, thank you for every, to everyone who's been watching. Uh, if you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in your lives. Uh, if you got a few bucks to share, we do appreciate it with a you know if you subscribe. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Uh, on behalf of myself, Nick, Allison, and our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat keeping it civil. Our next show is We the North in just about five or six minutes. Uh, we will talk to you next week on Infimidation. So have a good week, everybody.